When, um, I think it was, you know better than me, I think it was Bowles when he was the GM of uh, the Marlins, I think back in 202, 203, it's in my book I haven't read for a couple of years. He coined the phrase we all use, the little, the little, the little man on the shoulder. And he talks about that little man on the shoulder. If he's there, he's going to drive you crazy. He's going to talk to you. He's going to talk you out of your game. He's, going, he's the insane crazy maker. Uh, I'm going to show you a way. If you have a character in your shoulder, a voice in your head, what do you do with a voice in your head? How do you say, stop it, stop it? It comes right back again. You try to kind of push it away, push it away, like don't think of peak elephants. It comes back stronger. It's a welterweight champion. The voice will outvoice your voice trying to fight it. It runs the show in all of us. That obsessive thought we can't get out, the song in your head you can't stop. By making the invisible visible, you can make the voice visible by telling your imagination, pretend and imagine that an image, a symbol, a cartoon, a person, a character, a monster makes me have that negative voice. An image will come in spontaneously. If you try to think of an image when I ask that question, you're in the left brain and you're out of the show. You sit there and ask your imagination like you ask someone, what time is it? Shut down your thinking factory, be quiet, and your imagination will come up with an image. You'll think, oh, that can't be it. First image is the symbolic image from your imagination. It speaks in symbolism. It's the universal language of the world. Always has been, always will be. And it loves to play. The imagination is hungry to play this game. It's saying you guys are always going that left analytical brain, trying to figure it out, analyze it, figure it out, analyzing it. No one comes to me says the right brain. It was huge 500 years ago in the 16th century with, with, uh, with uh, medicine. Aristotle and Hippocrates knew uh, back then that if they could go into the dream world of their patients, they set up dream temples for their patients, and they were trying to go in at nighttime into the dreams of the patients. They knew if they could get inside the dream and change the dream, they could cure people. They found brushes uh, years later in excavation trying to brush away the problem. I fell into the hole, found out if you make the problem into a, a living dream at the moment and enter the dream, that's a dream they're all trying to get into at nighttime, this one you can get into it consciously. So um, we'll go for, um, here's an example of the little man on the shoulder, uh, chapter 7. My name is Lee Rubin. I'm a professional baseball player in the K&M Professional Baseball League. Um, I worked with Dr. Crowley this past season and had tremendous success with him. I've been able to sort of pick up on this pattern that I've been going through my whole entire life as thriving as the underdog and sort of regressing as the top dog. And, and picking up in that pattern, it's been an empowering thing for me. Um, I've, what I experienced, and a lot of other pe people experience, is as soon as a lot of attention is being focused your way, the noise in your head, the static in your head, gets a little louder and louder. And what I used to do is take that noise and that, that chatter in my head, that negative self-talk, and I used to take it very personally. And I used to let it really affect my game. But with working with Dr. Crowley, I no longer, no longer take that negative self-talk so seriously. I just am able to brush it off my shoulder and say, you know what, you can't hurt me, you know? And uh, it's been, a, it's been a, wonderfully, a wonderfully empowering thing for me to be able to do. That is, as soon as I start hearing that static, I'm able just to just brush it aside and not let it affect me. We all have beliefs.